Hello everybody and welcome to The War Room. This one is for a very exciting featherweight clash between Josh Emmett and Ilya Taporia. Undefeated Ilya Taporia in 13 fights. And of course, Josh Emmett, tough, powerful, scary dude. I'm very excited for this fight. Jamie and I were literally just talking about this before the camera started rolling. This it, It's a very, very exciting one. But basically because of what these guys bring to the table. I mean, Taporia is, he is the consummate finisher and Josh Emmett, I mean, what power he's got in his hands is certainly what we've seen more recently in his career. He's definitely in a position where he needs to get back on a winning track, especially because, you know, with his age, I feel like time's maybe running out for him a little bit. But um, he's got a real tough test in front of him with Ilya Taporia, who has seen some adversity in recent fights, and that might give Josh Emmett confidence, but we shall see. Before we go any further, I've got to give a shout out to our awesome sponsors. I love this stuff, you know it. Athletic Greens, AG1. It's the way that I start my day. It's the way Veronica starts a day. We get up, we have our 12 ounces of water, we we put a scoop in, we mix it up, and I am I am I already feel like I've made the best decision of my day to start with so I feel like I'm on the right track to continue that throughout the day. And and you know I'm I'm thinking constantly during the day researching having conversations meetings etc. I just feel like my brain is cleaner and sharper and better fed with this stuff. It really is fantastic. Um, it's got 75 uh, vitamins and minerals, adaptogens, probiotics, which of course you've got to get your uh, your, your gut biome in, in place. It is the first line of defense pretty much against everything. And when we're talking about lines of defense, you're going to need some D3 and K2 as well. Vitamin D3, the research is improving by the day. It is fantastic stuff. And if you go to our uh, link, if you go to athleticgreens.com forward slash outlawed, you will get five of the free travel packs, which are very useful for our busy lives, and you'll get a year's free supply of vitamin D3 and K2. It's a very easy decision to make, and it just makes the world of difference to your health. So make sure you check it out. Okay, tail of the tape. So we've got Josh Emmett coming in with a record of 18 wins and three losses. Decent amount of experience by comparison to Ilya Taporia, who's 13-0. and 0. Um, One inch height advantage for Ilya Taporia, one inch reach advantage for Josh Emmett. Um, just a quick, uh, just a quick uh, a record breakdown for you. So of 18 wins for Josh Emmett, we've got six knockouts and two submissions. We've got an arm triangle and a guillotine. Um, on Ilya Taporia's side of 13 wins, we've got four knockouts and eight submissions. One person's made it the distance with him, and that was Yusuf Salal. And as you remember, there was a lot of movement in that fight, which didn't lead to much of a conclusion. But generally, Ilya Taporia, even if he comes up against adversity, he's, he's able to find the finish later in the fight. He was exciting coming through the lower ranks, coming through cage warriors. I mean, you, you just you saw the two ends of his game. He's either going to clamp onto your neck and strangle the life out of you, or he's going to knock you out cold. Or, you know, I mean, maybe somewhere between the two, maybe he's going to knock you down to the floor and then strangle the life out of you. But he's, either way, he's a very, very difficult and dangerous person to deal with. Um, now, we saw him, like I said, we saw him uh, have a bit of adversity against uh, Jai Herbert. And I think that's going to fill Josh Emmett with confidence because, of course, Josh Emmett is predominantly a striker. He's going to be using any grappling skills he's got for takedown defence. And I, and I don't see any other... I don't see any other reason why Josh Emmett would engage Ilya Tapoya on the floor unless he's he's taken a, a you know that big right hand or that left hook to the body and and he's feeling very uh, incapacitated. Um, Emmett's best bet is to is to time Tapoya as he's coming in and Tapoya, you know, because he is a finisher, he's he's looking for the finish and sometimes that does leave him a little bit overextended. Sometimes he'll see the finish in front of him and he'll chase it and he'll put himself at harm's reach because of it and they're the moments where Josh Emmett's power comes through like you saw what he did against Mercer Bektic if you can if he can keep landing that stiff jab Tapori is going to feel like he's stuck on the outside and that could be very useful for him uh, for, for for Josh Emmett because if you can make your opponent uh, 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 frustrated you can make them overly aggressive and if they're overly aggressive they're going to make mistakes which are going to make it easier to hit them now, ultimately, the power, of course, in Josh Emmett's right hand is what gets it done. You remember the the, the right hand that he hit Michael Johnson with that just poof, collapsed him. That's the kind of power that, of course, uh, uh, um, Ilya Tapori has got to be very careful of. And this is why we might see more grappling in this, in this one. But you've also got to remember that if you Ilya Tapori are looking at Josh Emmett, 
the first five or ten minutes of grappling with him are going to be really difficult because of the physicality of Josh Emmer. He's a very strong, powerful guy, and he's and he seems to have a very good gas tank unless unless you start hurting him, unless he's cut or he's been hit to the body like he was against uh, Yaya Rodriguez. He's he's an engine, and he's going to keep going. So th- this is this is really a test for me of Ilya Taporia's m- measurement and maturity. Like in his last couple of fights against against Bryce and against uh, uh, Jai Herbert, we saw some some moments where he was overextended and and unnecessarily vulnerable. If he does that against uh, Josh Emmett, then there's a, a real risk that that uh, he's going to get put to sleep and get that first loss added to his record. But I also look at this fight and think to myself, this it feels this has kind of perfectly been set up for, you know. Like Josh Emmett was given the opportunity against Yaya Rodriguez. It didn't work, so now we're going to use Josh Emmett to springboard Ilya Taporia into the next position. And it's, it's how it works. You know, it's not, you know, it's, it's it's the nature of combat sports. But sometimes when you can see the matchmaking, you can kind of go, okay, well, I can see there's there's a springboard. Like Carlos Condit knocked him out. Let's give him Anthony Johnson next because we want to get Anthony Johnson to a to a, a, a you know a title shot because he's a big puncher. Rest his soul. We, we all miss An- uh, Anthony Johnson very much. Um, but it, you know that that's kind of the nature of it. You know, it's it's like once you're the commodity that's been used up, then you become the commodity that that feeds the next commodity into the machine. And and you know it, it's. Unfortunately, I feel like Josh Emmett's, you know, he was born in uh, 1985. He's, he's almost as old as me. And I know that he's had issues with injuries. I know that he's he's got damage on his, you know, he got cut against Rodriguez. I I, I just kind of feel like this is, this is there, this is a, it's it's been, it's been, <laughs> It's been set up to give Ilya, Ilya the opportunity to to springboard himself off a off a big name, which is Josh Emmett, of course, and 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 that could quite potentially happen. But these things also do sometimes backfire. Ilya's not had it all his way in his last couple of fights, and Josh Emmett is is determined and angry because of his performance against Yaya Rodriguez. Like he didn't need to be on the ground against Yaya Rodriguez. That was he, he was there because he was he was hurt. It was not a smart place to be, and. Surely he knew that the triangle was being set up. He could feel the risk control. You know, like these are the things. Like I, I don't feel like Josh Emmett is. J- Josh Emmett's good on uh, on the ground. Good top position. Strong. That was the first time he'd been submitted as well. It's worth noting. It's also worth noting that he's only been stopped twice in his in his career, and they've both been in his last two losses. Um, so again, that kind of leads me to feel like okay, well now before he was tough enough to take the shots, now he's he's, he's unfortunately not. And and that does you know it comes comes to all of us if we keep fighting long enough and and uh, you know Emmett's Emmett's pushed himself he's a, he's a strong athlete and he's had a, he's had a tough career and I feel like Taporia although he's reached some adversity in his last couple of fights I feel like that adversity has come at the right time and this is where he moves forward and learns from that adversity Th- this might be a far cleaner performance than it was against Mitchell or Herbert because of the fights against Mitchell and Herbert. Had he not had those and gone in against Josh Emmett, he may have gotten reckless and walked onto that big right hand. But because of the experiences that he had against Jai Herbert and against Bryce Mitchell, they they have most likely evolved his approach to the fight, which is going to be really beneficial against a power puncher like uh, Josh Emmett. Um, now, he did get a little overzealous with, with uh, Bryce Mitchell. Mitchell likes to wrestle. He's a good grappler, of course. And every time Taporia was pitching that right hand over, you saw... Uh, um, you saw Bryce Mitchell dipping underneath it and threatening takedowns. And that could be really useful for, for Josh Emmett to do, even if he doesn't want the takedown. Level changing to get out the way of the right hand would be valuable. It would force Ilya Taporia to switch his attack, maybe even search a neck. Like It doesn't even need to be a full takedown. It can just be a feint, but it would get him out of the way of that power right hand of Taporia. And, and then you've got to think about the... The finish against Jai Herbert was just beautiful. He came in that hook to the body and then the right hand over the top w- once he'd opened up the target. Both of those punches are going to be really difficult to land if Josh Emmett is establishing that jab really well like he did against Bektic. I, I do feel like that is going to be um, a-, a big key for him. Tapori has got great footwork and and, and he's got a... And this is, again, just my opinion from, from my research. I feel like Taporia's footwork is more educated than Emmett's. I feel like Emmett kind of stalks a little bit because of his power in his right hand. Whereas with Taporia, I've seen him sweep his opponents into positions to hit them before. Now, sometimes he, he can get a little reckless, of course, we've said that, but he believes in his punching power. 
But he also has been under pressure and we've seen him use his footwork well. And in times when Emmett's been under pressure, I feel like he's made bad decisions with his footwork, which have kind of made the situation worse. Again, I go back to the Yaya Rodriguez fight. Um, something that is going to give Josh Emmett confidence in this one, he, he, is, he is the stat leader for time spent in bottom position in featherweight division. He spent a total of 30 seconds on his back. And just to put this into context, Josh Emmett's number one, and uh, Alexander Volkanovsky is number six. <laughs> so, like, he's stacking up pretty good in this division. It, time spent in bottom position, uh, percentage of time spent in bottom position are, are both very much in um, very much in Josh Emmett's favour. Um, now, against Yaya Rodriguez, we did see good hips and we did see decent sub defence. But then the 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 submission that he was caught in that was, and and referring back to the show that we've just recorded, which was Vittori against. Uh, against Cannoneer, which I've hope, I hope you've already watched. And if you haven't, the fight's happened. Just go back and give it a like and a subscribe and then we're good. Um, I always like to see fighters get submissions in the UFC. You know, often we'll get, oh, this guy's got six submissions on his record and then you look at him and it's like his first six pro fights and everybody that they subbed were like 0 oh, and 6 and they've all been subbed. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? Sometimes you see this on people's records and their earlier record can skew their later records. Oh military helicopters it is the war room after all i didn't pay for that additional sound effect i promise it's just convenient um yeah so yaya rodriguez that was yaya's first submission in the ufc and and that's that's a big deal because it shows that his grappling is at that level but it also showed that that josh emmett just wasn't really present he'd been hurt he was damaged he was in a position where he really didn't need to be and and there was a lot of calls from the corner uh they were, they were going, finish it now. And I feel like his brain just went, I'm just going to go into attack mode. And he just, he wasn't taking into account what was coming back in his direction. And, and uh, Yaya set up that triangle beautifully. And 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 if, if, if Yaya Rodriguez can hurt him and sub him, I very much feel like Ilya Taporia uh, can do that as well. And one other thing I thought was interesting, because I like commonalities, I like patterns and things. If you look at Ilya Taporia's record, his, his submission record, the only the only submission that stands out as the anomaly are the two guillotines on it. Everything else has some kind of triangle situation in it. So you've got a triangle armbar, you've got a triangle, you've got two anacondas, which are triangles, you've got rear naked chokes, which are triangles. Josh Emmett's just been caught in a triangle. He's a very, very powerful individual, right? Now, one thing is catching a neck. It's going to be difficult to do against Josh Emmett because of the alpha male guys. They're all so good at chasing necks. The other problem with someone like Josh Emmett is because they're so incredibly powerful, it's difficult to wrap them up unless you catch them very quickly like, like Yaya Rodriguez did. It was a beautiful setup. Perfectly set up, hammer fisted him, so he dropped his head into the triangle, locked it up. You need a good... You need a good clamp on someone as, as strong as Josh Emmett. And and from the tri from the submissions that we've seen on Ilya Taporia's uh record, they are all submissions where he's clamped onto something. Clamped onto an arm and a and a neck, clamped onto just a neck, clamped onto the back and the neck. Like these these triangular controls, once they're locked in, are so difficult to break. If you're putting somebody on my back to take my back and try and choke me out, I would much rather them have hooks than a body triangle, as an example. Arm at uh, neck attacks are so much more dangerous once it's cinched up. This point, you can fight the hands. This point, when before this hand has completed the triangle, you, you, you can get yourself out. It's that point when the hand goes down the back of the head on the rear naked choke that the triangle's complete. So all of these, all of these skills that Tapori has got in his game are perfect for someone that's big and powerful. And because he's got the power in his hands to either hit him with the hit him to the head with the right hand or hit him to the body with the left hook, there are things that he could do to damage Josh Emmett before it hits the floor. As you can tell, I'm probably I'm leaning slightly towards Tapori here, but I, I feel like that's purely because of where Josh Emmett is in his career. And I don't know whether he feels like He's kind of on his way out, whether that opportunity against Jaya Rodriguez took some wind out of his sails or what, but this is a really, really tough fight. He can capitalize on Ilya Taporia's mistakes if he gets too overzealous because Josh Emmett's got that great power. 
but he doesn't really want to get into those striking exchanges. He needs to establish that jab and he needs to make his opponent frustrated so Taporia starts being reckless because when he gets reckless, he gets hit and he gets hurt. And I don't know as anybody's hit him as hard as Josh Emmett can potentially crack him on his chin. What haven't I mentioned? Yeah, he struggles with low kicks, Josh Emmett. That's another thing I think might be problematic for him. Just because he keeps so much weight on his lead leg, and this is where I talk about the the uh, educated footwork. Taporia's, Taporia's got a better understanding of when to put weight on his lead leg and how to. Josh Emmett tends to rock his weight onto his lead leg, which makes it quite obvious for a good low kicker. Um, but again, you know, kick me. I'm going to hit you with this at the same time. And if you're good at that trade, if you've got that big power right-hand trade, then then you can get away with it. And I, and I feel like Josh Emmett certainly has that power. But I feel like Ilya Taporia may have leveled up after those last couple of fights. Even though he's remained undefeated, he's, 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 he's seen some adversity and he's felt what it can be like to be on the losing end. And he still managed to regroup and beat some really, really incredible fighters. So I'm, I'm very high on Ilya Taporia. I think he's, I think he's got a very bright future ahead of him. Um, I just wonder whether the future of Josh Emmer has been determined already or whether he's still got one last fantastic performance in him and this might be it. I will be looking forward to finding out. Make sure you check out our sponsors, um, AG1 Athletic Greens. One of the best decisions you'll ever make with your life. It'll improve your health. It'll improve your mindset and your sleep and your capacity to take on the world. That's really ultimately what we all need at the end of the day or at the beginning of the day before we start it. Athletic Greens. Go to athleticgreens.com forward slash outlawed and you will get five free travel packs, which are essential. And of course, your year's free supply of vitamin D3 and K2 to keep you healthy and resilient. Keep your immune system in check. All right, enjoy these fights, and I'll see you next time.